Good evening. evening. It's seven o'clock. We have a quorum. It's six thirty. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for biz general business is Michael Balunas and family. Good evening. Good evening. My wife, my mother-in-law, and myself would like to create an in-law apartment at thirty-nine Lawrence Plain Road with an attached garage. These are not to scale; just a rough idea. <laughs> Could you explain what we've got here? This is my existing house. This is my breezeway. This is an existing garage with a new breezeway to a new garage with an 880 square foot accessory apartment. Accessory apartment. This, this existing Correct. blacktop and that's new blacktop. Correct. The driveway is Route 47, the Spice Company or that's whatever they're called is right next here. door. We're looking to see if Michael, Mike and his wife asked me about this during the week, and I said, well, technically this meets zoning, but I said, that's not my decision. I said, this is the planning board. I said, come in on a Tuesday night, show them what you've got, see what they think. And so that's what they're so here So is for. that going to be a completely enclosed breezeway? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, okay. We are all these other parts that come in the reason they kind of want the breezeway as opposed to attaching a building is the septic is back here. So this way it gives them an opportunity to have, to have things pumped and stuff, just to run the hoses through there as opposed to driving all the way around and getting everything else. Yeah, the Board of Health is meeting tonight. You, that's part of the approval process. Right. You yeah. go right down there and check with them to see if that's okay. Yeah. And that would be pending our septic's big enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. But what we're looking for is to see whether you guys would support this or decline it yeah. before we get carried away with formal drawings and engineering and all of that. What is the, what's the board's opinion? I'm in favor of it. Well, at some point we're going to have a bit longer conversation about detached accessory apartments versus attached accessory apartments. Uh, I think as long as that's got a, a foundation and it's weather tight, it probably meets the letter of the the law. So. Lord Bill was saying we're not encouraging people to add on a wing to their house. It should be where we're really we're thinking inside the house. Well, but people this is pretty. People, there, 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 there's been doing this. There's been yeah. quite a few that've been adding wings onto their houses. Yeah, the this one is a little bit different. He's putting on. You know, a, size a big garage, garage, and then the apartments on the back of the so, garage. You know, He's got gar lots of you have a garbage disposal in your in your, your existing house. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot. Say if you got rid of it, that equal an extra bedroom. No, no garbage disposal. Mm -hmm. So that's an existing shed yeah. in the backyard. So and it would meet all of the minimum requirements. We had talked that it was 40 feet, I believe. Property line, the back of building. Yeah. Technically, this is the back of the building. It's actually 40 feet here. That's a site. Well, there's probably 200 feet. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. yeah. Property. Yeah. And there's plenty of room this way. The uh, horse farm is right here. What's the problem? What is it? Well, there's a stretch. Of well, yeah, that's right. There's, 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 there's some farm field, farm stone. field right here. But then there's the, the, the yeah. So I guess you got your answer pretty much. They, it's agreed to meet the letter of the law, and you wouldn't be wasting your time to go forward. Yeah, right. That's what we were looking for. Thank you, gentlemen. Your opinion, Mark? I was deferring to you. Since you know the letter sharper than I do. We can ask that question. What's that? Is there a would there be a letter that states that we can move forward from you gentlemen or no. just go ahead and just, just go ahead just because it's, it's so it's so preliminary i mean it meets the letter on the bylaw and you know the deep the, de the devil's often in the details what will the details look like what's the hearing date no. the hearing, that is no application he's got to get a draw got to get all drawn he's got a quite a bit of work to go yeah. yeah he just wanted to come in I got you. Before he spent any real money on it, he can go down the long road. Right. You know, that's why we're here. Yeah. All right. Thank okay. you, gentlemen. Welcome. 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 Welcome.
the, okay. uh, so I got, uh, okay. so the, uh, the sign lady said, well, where's my decision? And I said that, uh, uh, this is for the mobile, the conversion to the mobile. She said, where's my decision? And I said, well, we haven't, haven't reached a decision because your plans were incomplete. Oh, I thought you decided on six things. And um, she, we decided on several things. We told her that we needed a, um, a rendering of the halo lit sign. What she sent us was this. I shared it with Jim, and not with everybody, but Jim said it's not my idea of a halo because you can actually... The way, the way this works, just so you will understand it, kind of draw... Well, did you bring the... Uh, that's just what I'm saying? That's, that's okay. just what... This is a good example. I don't have to draw anything. On a map, a backlit sign. Mm -hmm. This is the building. Yeah. This is the sign. Yeah. The light is here. It shoots against the building. This is all solid, opaque. Right. It shoots against the building and creates a true backlit sign. So the sign is 100% opaque. Right. So at night, the sign is dark, but around it is light. Right. This one, they have an opaque facade. The sign is actually illuminated On the sides. around the back of the letters. So that if you use this, this is all like clear something. So it's like you got so the outline. Light, so the light comes out the side, and this mm -hmm. is an outline, and this is not I we consider an, a backlit sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're trying to take the side door. It, it, yeah, it, it's and if you look at the zoning bylaw, it specifically says it defines this as a sign that's not acceptable. Okay. okay? Only reason I saw that because when I was doing the all the amends, I happened to hit the sign, the sign by law, and they gave that as unacceptable definition of a backlit sign. So uh, what she said was, "This is Carolyn Parker." What she said here. was that they uh, this is the only sign they have, so they'd like to put it up anyway and not turn it on. Uh, no. no, no, not. I will not vote for that. No. Other companies can do this. They can do anything. They can. They can certainly have a sign company. Yeah. Well, this one. This one says it is a backlit sign. They're yeah. talking about putting uh, LEDs in there. Yeah. Okay. Which one is that? The mattress firm. firm. But it's. But it's aluminum, so it's gonna. So as I read it. It's going to reflect off the back of that opaque sign and then bounce off on the wall. It, well, we, we need we need we need yeah, to get to that one. Yeah. We'll put that one off. Yeah. That one off. But yeah. Certainly, there's they're looking for loopholes. We maybe ought to make the interpret interpretation back to the old goose then. So, the only way that I can see accepting this is not just to say, we'll turn it off, but just to say, don't electrify it. Right. Yes. Right. Well, if they want to do that, put some gooseneck lighting on it, like Joe said, but that's their only option. And it won't be, it'll be illuminated with gooseneck lighting of some sort. I mean, it could be spotlights and stuff like that, too. But. And when did but I guarantee if we drove around within a reasonable area, you'd probably find exactly what we're looking for with the mobile sign. Yeah, these guys can drill down 15,000 feet and kick a well off another mile and a half this way. But that's the only sign they can come up with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what uh, she did was send me the entire package with her handwritten notes on it. So I just wanted to go through it before we, uh, so the, uh, uh, I'm going to make a motion to approve the following conditions. Uh, 
canopy rotor is not electrified. Probably even make the suggestion that a, of a gooseneck lighting. Or gooseneck. Okay. Then uh, there was the, the blades. No, there is no pricking on the blades. Planning board. Right. Okay. Very right. No text. Yes. Okay. Which uh, for? For the um, hill. No. Yeah. Just here for the for the public meeting. For the he hearing right. on the heirloom collective. Yeah. Okay. That will come up in a bit. Uh, and then these. Uh, blades. And uh, the koalas, no permit required. And yeah, that's the, okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the um, Approved mobile signage uh, with the 20, on the condition the 23 inch canopy letters are not to be electrified. Gooseneck, okay. No printing on the blades and no permit required for the koalas. Okay. That's the motion. Second. Have a second. Any other discussion? Is that Mark or? There's no, that was uh, Mike, Mike quite Mike. a second. And there's no, there's no text on the koalas either. So they're both. I think they were just proposed to have uh, numbers on them. Oh, numbers, okay, right. Yeah. Which makes sense. Okay. Yeah, they just, yeah, just so you can see the, which pump it is. Right. Yeah. Got, or no, that's something else, that's the blades. Oh, there's a number wedge on the on right. That's separate from the blade or the so the blade and the koala will have no text. Yeah, they're just the branding color. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All in, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to write that up for Tim? Oh. So they show on the koalas uh, that they can put a poster on there. That's that's not signage, right? That's yeah. That's that might be their advertising for the breakfast sandwich of the day or something. Not illuminated. Maybe that's what they're not including is that poster area. So no, actually on the uh, the no on the blade, she did write in no text. Right. So um, so that supersedes the right. And then uh, on the next to last page, the koala shows a poster area of two point. Yeah. So we'll put no text on the koala. Sign. Nowadays they have uh, digital screen, they can do advertising signage. But that's not signage. It's really to Mark and Mike, this conversation about what we would like a sign to look like, and as Jim said, there must be a, a mobile sign, like, mm. and uh, Dunkin' Donuts got a little gaudy in the center of town and but well, that's our logo and Mike was pointing out the one in Williamsburg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they they can do custom signage. I've seen McDonald's so, do a custom 
Jim and Lisa were taking pictures in, of various buildings when they're in their travels of signs that you like and the design that you like with various companies. So uh, Jim's came from uh, Williamsburg. No, it was UVA, Charlottesville. So you have a phone with you all the time anyway. Take a picture of yeah. signs that we like better than what we're being offered. And, the, and my line is always, Mark, there was uh, Zayers, Wokols, Elmies, uh, Steigers, they have the biggest signs in town. It doesn't necessarily approve their longevity. Caldors. Bradley's. What is, it? what is it? You said no permit? Uh, no permit. Joe, do you remember when no we text. instituted no backlit signs? How far back does that go? And do you remember what precipitated it? I, yeah, it was LED blinking lights, uh -huh. and uh, it was a sign that was permitted by the building inspector because he felt that was his interpretation of our yeah. bylaws. So we really have to make it specifically mm. very, very, and it was the one that was uh, where the rental place is. Uh, oh, by Taylor? Rental? Taylor Rental, oh. there. And it was a blinking LED light. And well, it was the hardware store. Huh? It was yeah. the hardware store. The where hardware store Rockies, was the light. Rockies, yeah, that's yeah. Rockies, Rockies. Yeah. Okay. And now they're gone. Then, and so then the mattress firm sign. The uh, so um, yeah. If you look closely, there's I think it's number three on the um, on the section of it. It says it's a eighth inch aluminum sign. So it's a solid sign. So the LEDs behind it are bouncing off of that onto the back wall. So it should be a halo. It says, uh, so uh, you're looking at the specs for the channel letters? Uh, okay. Yeah, go to the, the, the aluminum letter with returns painted black. What's this number right here that points to the front surface? Five. Uh, aluminum face is painted to match red, but then it says here, uh, item three, clear Lexan black back. That's, a, that's the back. The back, the light. See, it's, it's enclosed, it's a solid front, and it's bouncing. The sides are evidently painted black. From what I'm reading this, number yeah, two, yeah. aluminum letters, returns, painted black. I think that's, that's a return, and the back is clear, so the lights are inside. They're shining against the wall. They're, well, they're either shining that way or they're bouncing off of this and then back out. Okay. I'm, not sure, I'm, I'm not sure which way. Oh, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you Does that bylaw say uh, it's below the type of sign we were just referring to, or does it say it, indirectly? It, it, it kind of vague when it comes That's to the That's what I thought. We were interpreting it. It almost seems like everybody's taking advantage of it a little bit more and a little bit more. Maybe we should just say gooseneck well, and I think what it comes down to for me is they flat out say that this is an internally illuminated sign. But it but it's a solid front, so it's 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 illuminated inside, so the housing is but as I understand it, it's I mean, a clear maybe, back, so it's I getting think, a softer light. Yeah. <laughs> I think before we do anything with this, we need to get some information. Get some on clarification. Yeah. So um, I think uh, I already did tell the uh, gentleman that he's also asking for um, too much, two, two signs, uh, 31 square feet and 38 square feet. So there's too much, the sign is right. too big. Right. He's allowed one sign, no, he's allowed multiple signs, but the back maximum is 40 square feet. Total. Yeah, he's 40 or 60. He's only got one frontage, so it's not like a quarter lot, as he may think it's a quarter lot. Jim, isn't it 64 square feet? No. Oh, it's just a single building. Manny's building, right? Manny's building. So he's allowed 64, you're right. Okay. Well, no, it's a multiple use building because oh, the. Uh, oh, that's right, there's multiple uses in it. Uh, the that's where they got the orange that. therapy is in there too. And right, according so. to the building inspector, the orange therapy has taken all the signage already. Uh -huh. um, so that's something that they're going to have to. That's between the landlord and. Amongst the, themselves. That's yeah. a landlord tenant issue. But. Uh, <clears throat> 
Um, so we need clarification and a, a picture of one of these. Yeah. Yep. I'll uh, write back to the company. Okay. Um, and uh, there was one other thing. No, I think we just want to see what it looks like. Oh, the other thing I said was that the um, any grandfathering <coughs> for the sign they had on their space in the main mall stays with that space. Right. It's not, been, the grandfathering has been used. They moved the Manny sign, which was internally yeah. Not internally lit. No. Well, it was internally lit down to their new location, yeah. which is kind of questionable. Yeah. Okay. The open the hat. Open the public hearing. The Halley Planning Board. I want to open the public or reopen the public hearing for the. No, I want to do this one first because I, I want to mention a few things with to Mr. Reedy after this one. The Halley Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, February 18, 2020, beginning at 6.45 p.m. in room 203 of the Halley Town Hall. Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of heirloom collection for a special permit, adult use marijuana, to reopen and to reopen site plan approval for property located at 457 Russell Street. The application and plans may be viewed in the town clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, February 3 and 10. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, I'm Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of the Heirloom Collective. With me this evening, CEO, President, and co founder of the Heirloom Collective, Jim Cunahan. I've also got Alex Abrams, retail sales manager, and then I think you all know local attorney Al Albano. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, 457 Russell Street, um, no exterior changes are contemplated or proposed, no interior changes are contemplated or proposed. I think you have all seen this, this was in your packets, this is just a bigger version of it. I think you approved it it's or accepted it as an as-built, of course. If the people in the back, Jim, may be waiting for 97 Russell Street, so... Is anybody here for 97 Russell Street? Yes. That public hearing has been continued to... Um, March, March 17th. March 17th. Okay. But, but, but there will be some brief discussion regarding it. Yeah, after the heirloom collection, there will be a little bit of discussion on it with Mr. Reed, with Attorney Reedy. Thank you. Okay, so we'll give you, it actually be a good chance for you to, I know you may have some concerns. I mean, he can't answer them, but at least he can bring them back to his clients. Okay. Perfect. Okay, Thanks. No, so uh, we think it's a, a pretty simple proposal you've got the the floor plan that i think you've seen before and then also the site plan um this is something that i think you approved as a board maybe in july of, of last year to refresh re 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 refresh your memory uh this is a site that has an off-site medical marijuana dispensary special permit associated with it you granted it back in october of 2016 uh, so what they're looking to do is co-locate, essentially, have medical and adult use sales. And they have to be a separate counter, is that correct? Uh, yeah, there has to be a dedicated medical counter. Okay. And there has to be, you can put up stanchions to keep them separate, but there has to be a, a dedicated medical space. Is there any different than the difference in the products between that that's sold for medical purposes and that's consumed for recreational purposes? So let's, I mean, from my experience, I see a, a lot of it being the same, but maybe if you want to take it. Sure. Step yeah, on. I mean, it, it comes down to dosage primarily. So on the edible side and the adult use side, they cap the dosage on things like gummies, things like right. that, to 100 milligrams per container. On the medical side, um, those there are much less limits, but fundamentally the same product. Okay. Yeah. So the product is the same, it's just a matter of how much you how can much? get at once, exactly. essentially? Yeah, okay. daily purchase limits and then individual purchase limits. Okay. And then obviously uh, medical is not taxed, but adult use would be taxed yeah. by the state. Oh, really? Yes. Because medical is... Oh, because it's considered medicine. Right. Correct. Okay. But can you... But the, the me can you, you... Excuse me. Yeah. Right. Your medical is not open yet, is it? We're waiting for the letter to commence operations from the state uh, that we thought we'd have two and a half weeks ago. And <laughs> okay. Any day, I'm told. <laughs> okay. Just to clarify, we would not open any day. Um, I've been in touch with David Nixon, town manager, who I believe has emailed uh, department heads and all the boards to make everyone aware. And we're basically asking if there's anyone that needs anything from us, 
you know, we want to take care of that before we open. So we're targeting, you know, sometime mid-March. Are you, you going to have a grand opening that we're invited to? Uh, <laughs> you're certainly invited. We, we do not plan to have a grand opening. <laughs> It'll be a soft opening. Yeah. But, but if anyone would like a tour of the facility, you're obviously more than The, uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure you could, Mike, the police chief has been in touch with you, but for the yeah. first couple of weeks at least that you're open, you'd like to have a police officer during your hours stationed someplace nearby at and obviously paid at your expense correct okay and you like yes we met with chief mason last week um we agreed for at least the first two weeks okay to have a paid detail at the location um and then we would consult with chief mason as to whether or not he feels and he would unilaterally decide if we, we, we need to continue we'll put that in our decision but it'll, it'll be a decision that'll be between your company and a police chief as to when to how long to continue or, or release that data when um, they opened one in North Amherst, I drive by it a couple times a day, and there was a police officer there for the first few weeks. Yeah, almost a month, I think, and with those big signs that they have to rent as well and then put out. And, and But he was stationed on 116 at the lights, yeah. about a, eh, what the, you know, a couple hundred yards away at least from the, from the facility, and then um, he was no longer there after that, but he never big traffic issue to do much. and when UMass reopened this during the summer that they opened obviously and then when they opened for UMass they wanted him back there and I think he was there for maybe two days okay. you got it because there was no virtually no change in traffic which I thought would be a little bit of change with it but there was you know almost no difference I mean there was never a, a big I mean his cars in the parking lot yeah. was never like you know, backed up lines or anything like right. that. When you look at, you know, Netta, like we talked about last time, when they first yes. opened or cultivated in Leicester, because I think it was just so novel, and now the, the market well, it, is... It was also the only one in... That's right, most, Massachusetts. Yes. Yeah, so right? And so they, people were coming from out of the state, and you saw, the place. you saw what happened. It's a bit more regulated now, where people yeah. can go to their dispensary. People from New York can go to Pittsfield, some people still go... Well, they go to New York and buy Oh, yeah. They? Uh, yeah. New York is medical only. I think. Oh, medical only? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty limited, yeah. too. Yeah, they have Very not... I mean, I think people are seeing, uh, politicians, I should say, are seeing the... They're, they're seeing this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so they're well, saying, no, see like, no, like, no, no. we're losing, we're losing, we're losing right. it's like wherever it is. Okay. No, that's sorry. All right. So, that's a different, different topic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty simple proposal. We've got 11 point of sale systems inside. One of them is going to be medical. The balance of them are going to be uh, adult use. Um, so we, we provided a traffic study. I know we provided it to DOT as well. I think in the worst case scenario was 50 vehicles entering, and, and that's I'm rounding up, 50 vehicles entering and exiting uh, in the peak hour, which is, I think, consistent with what we would see in a peak hour would be 50 people coming in. What you have to remember, though, is people are coming in and it's the transaction times. And so they go in and they probably stay there for an average of 10 minutes, you know, from getting out of the car, going inside, looking, showing their ID, looking at the menu, actually ordering. Somebody goes to get the product, they get the product to them, and then they exit in there back into the vehicle. It's, it's a pretty quick turn and a lot of the times what they have are menus available online so folks are able to look prior to actually going and saying, oh, geez, I'm going to have, you know, an edible, this edible today, or they don't have the flower that I like. And so it, it's not necessarily, you know, pass by. People typically leave to go to get something, get back in their car and go. So we think with 30 parking spaces, 28 of them are non-ADA. We've got two ADA right in front. But with those 30 parking spaces, our anticipated volume and the, um, just the average transaction time, we think that 28 is plenty for what we have. How is our operation? 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. Do you grow your own or can, or can you buy it from outside? You can do, we grow our own, but you can buy on the wholesale market. Okay. So our cultivation processing facility is located in Bernston. Okay. So could we go back to the traffic study? Uh, when you first came in, you asked for a waiver of the traffic study uh, on the premise that you would be akin to a pharmacy with a drive through window. And there is a... And use code. There's, you know, there's the, that, that big book of yes. traffic that the ITE yeah, right. provides a, uh, an estimate for that. Um, since you haven't opened, we have no way of comparing the estimate against actual. What was the premise for the traffic study? 
So the one that was provided, it, it was a, a mix of ITE data. So as you can imagine, so the ITE is Inst Institute of Transportation Engineers. They put out a big book that has just a, a survey all across America of different land uses. And then they uh, attribute a code to it. And then there's a calculation that they do based upon the square footage of the establishment. And so the way that the traffic engineer did it here was uh, a mixture of the ITE. So there's a marijuana dispensary traffic code. Um, and then also they went and they took some data from Meta and INSA when they first opened and then extrapolated, which frankly I think is overly conservative, especially given everything we've seen since that time. I think if you looked at, and, and INSA probably not as much, but Netta was probably on the extreme end because it was the first in the state. And so then what they did was they backed out the proposed number of trips to a weekday AM, which was 39 in, 36 out for a total of 75, and then weekday PM, which was 48 in, 48 out for a total of 96. So that's why, you know, when I'm speaking, I was giving a conservative estimate of 50, you know, 50 in and 50 out. Um, and, it's, and it's based on, I think, some market data as well, what we actually expect to see um, in the dispensary. And I think that's based upon what other dispensers are seeing, and you can kind of extrapolate that from how much they're paying in host community agreement fees. You know, that 3%, you can figure out, and you can figure out the, anticipated transaction amount and come up with some good data. So it's still a relatively young industry, you know, not all states have legalized it, um, but I think we do have some pretty solid data about what we expect. As, as the number of stores to sell this stuff expands, does the market expand or is the market pretty stable? Just curious. Yeah, I guess my short answer would be they're kind of happening simultaneously. So there are new people entering the market kind of at the same time new places are coming online. So in terms of peak demand, um, I don't think we've seen it. And because think, it's legal now, people are using it. And, uh, you know, as an alternative to other pharmaceutical medications, things like that. So you have people that are migrating into the industry simultaneous to uh, new businesses opening up. Um, but it's a bit of a moving target in terms of knowing I can't, I, I can't imagine that because it's legal, they're suddenly going to try it. They weren't, weren't, didn't have a deal they were getting from before, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, and I think, I mean, people being able to grow at home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now people can just grow their own, and so you want to talk yeah. about you know, sure. seat the table, or, you know, seat the pipe, I suppose. You know, you've got some people that are doing that as well. Other no other alterations, signs, uh, it's going to be the same, lighting will be the same in the parking lot. What you see is what you get. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Anybody in the audience on this one? Okay. Uh, do you read, what was the date of uh, the original site plan approval? October 4th, 2016. I got a month. Okay. Uh, let's see. August 2nd, 2016. Yeah, it's August 2nd. There was a, if you remember, there was a um, reconsideration. Reconsideration. And then ultimate vote. Okay. Could you get these two plans to bill in a PDF form, yes. email, yes. so we can put them in with the decision? Certainly. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I will first do a motion to amend the uh, To amend the uh, uh, original site plan approval uh, of August 2nd, 2016. Um, determine that proposed changes are not significant or major and can be addressed without uh, further review. Uh, planning board has reviewed the following changes. A traffic study providing provided a traffic study was provided for adult use. Um, and uh, all other conditions of the original decision, original site plan approval decision remain in effect. 
That's the motion? That's the motion. We have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And then I will make a motion to uh, for adult use cannabis special permit. Uh, project is in harmony with the general purpose and the intent of the bylaw, not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Work will be conducted in accordance with the amended 1027-17. That right? There might be a revision at the top right corner. Oh, okay. Ah, here we go. Okay. Uh, no. That's the site plan. Then. So I guess this is just the original one. This is the drawing of the building. Oh, the floor plan. Oh, yeah, floor I think the floor plan has stayed the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, Revision history, seven, as built, seven two nineteen. Yep. Correct, yes. Seven two, two nineteen. 19. Okay. Uh, so this approval uh, is for the specific intended uh, use of the premises by the Heirloom Collective for adult cannabis sales. Any other uses prohibited without further approval of the board. Uh, ours are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Yes. Correct. And maybe just one piece. So your the offsite medical marijuana dispensary says this shall only be used for an offsite medical marijuana dispensary. So maybe in this decision, you just want to know, you know, adult use and, as and, right and medical and medical. That would be great. Thanks. We already have the uh, a medical special permit. Right. Correct. So uh, I just want to be careful with only when somebody looks uh, at it to understand that it's come after, so it hasn't extinguished what's come before. Okay. I'll just make a note that uh, the med use was previously approved. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, uh, approval is subject to approval of other boards. Oh, uh, one more thing. Um, and uh, police detail at the discretion of the Hadley Police Chief. Good way to put it. Basically, the agreements. No, that's the that, that's funny. I mean, we it's up to <laughs> it's not up to us. Okay, uh, approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, Sewer Commission, Water Commissioners, Select Board. Um, uh, any uh, project changes directed by other boards must be uh, approved by the planning board. Minimum Mission Board of Health up there too. Yeah, I don't know if they have anything, but we were just discussing that, and there is a question about how much jurisdiction the Board of Health has because the Cannabis Control Commission is right. Oh, interesting. Right. Right. Whatever they have, they have. It's, 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 yeah. it's just, we're just saying right. that if they have something or if they don't. Okay. That's the motion. Do we have a second? Not second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, you very much. You Thanks. want the yeah. old medical or just the new one, Bill? Uh, 
I just the new one, I think. Okay. Uh, I'll do all the amendments, but I have to. Yeah, yeah, I better take well. them all. Okay. All right. Just we're amending one. All right. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah, Good luck. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank we appreciate you very much. it. Do you, you anticipate full opening in the middle of March? Right. Just, just medical. Oh, just medical. Uh, still a. Uh, so this is a ways out. Extended state process. I would say as early as June <laughs> and as late as September for adult use. We will obviously notify um, the town manager well in advance of okay. opening. Okay. Yeah. And again, okay. I, anyone that wants to tour the facility and has an interest in seeing it, more than welcome to come okay. up. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Think of just yeah. normal, normal bureaucratic process, or is it the. Uh, the way that some towns are really trying to gouge you for it, it hasn't been the towns it's been the state in their response times um, after each step in the licensing process you have to have an inspection done scheduling those inspections has taken on average three to four months that's to schedule it and then usually there's six weeks out from the day they schedule it so we've waited as long as six months just to get an inspection scheduled and then sometimes they'll come out and say we want an extra camera added which obviously we will do they have to schedule another inspection to come back and look at the camera once it's installed. Oh boy. So it's taken a long time. With that said, in the last several weeks, we've seen a significant drop in the amount of time it's taking them to schedule inspections. And it's yet to be seen whether that's- How many, pending, or how many inspections are pending in this state? I mean, that's a good question. Hundreds. Hundreds? Yeah. Hundreds. Really? And the gentleman who runs inspections uh, for the Cannabis Control Commission left his position about a month ago. <laughs> and the rumor, and it's just a rumor, is that they don't intend to replace them, they intend to manage it by committee. Hmm. Oh, great. It's even better. <laughs> yeah. The committees are always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you know what to expect <laughs> with one guy. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you again, gentlemen. We appreciate okay. it. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. We will reopen the public hearing on the uh, 97 Russell Street, the Hadley Garage. We do have a request from the applicant, which we will get to, but we're going to give people a chance to talk about this one first. And it says, Dear Planning Board, please accept this email as a formal request for a continuation of the hearing currently scheduled for the evening of 21820 for the property at 97 Russell Street on behalf of Building and Grounds LLC to March 17, 2020. The applicant is going to appear at the March 10th Hadley Conservation Commission hearing and would like to begin, if not complete that process, prior to appearing in front of the planning board. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Yours truly, Tom Rady. That's this gentleman sitting right here in case you didn't know. And um, a couple of comments that uh, about this site. We did get a letter from the Board of Selectmen that I will read, and they were at the um, to the planning board, dear planning board, please accept this letter as a clarification of the jurisdictional responsibilities of the planning board and the select board when it involves parking on public ways. It was recently reported in the media that the members of the planning board are debating whether to restrict on street, on street parking in connection to a commercial site plan for the Esalon Cafe. The select board acknowledges and supports the planning board's powers and duties and in matters involving zoning and a particular on-site parking requirements as outlined in section 5.4 and elsewhere in the zoning bylaws of the code of the town of Hadley. The select board is the governing body, body when it comes to parking and parking on public ways as per the provisions of chapter 218 of the general bylaws of the town of Hadley as well as mass general laws chapter 84 at, at Sequina. What is that supposed to be for? At SEC. Oh, at SEC. Oh, at SEC. Okay. And follow -ups. And okay. Please coordinate with the select board before requiring any restrictions on public ways for any applicant for a site plan. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please contact, feel free to contact me, Christian Stanley, chair of the select board. The planning board never questioned that the select board has authority um, to grant parking or not on a public way. So, anyways. Well, why did he write that then? They. We won't go there. It was report, as reported in the media. Yes. So, uh, the, media? presumably the Gazette, because I think that's the only one that reported um, on it. A couple of things. The regarding the parking on the public way. I'll give Mr. Reedy a copy of each of these. These are the two original decisions of Esalon Cafe. The reason there's two is they came in to see us. 
for parking and site plan approval on the original Esalon. And we said no parking in the 50 foot front right of way. They came back to us a few months later and I guess realized they needed extraditional parking and we gave them the right to park in the 50 foot right of way along Route 9. So you'll see two, two different plans and that's really the big delineation between the two. Okay. Both of those plans show the uh, outdoor patio, which is the same as the outdoor patio today, and all parking contained on site. There is no parking off site and they clearly do not show any parking because even the West Street parking area is shown there, at least part of it. So that's what we're trying to do. The Esalon Cafe needs to have their parking on site. And they can share parking with the Hadley Garage. We'll leave that alone until the next sure. hearing is continued. Sure. Okay. The, shortly after our last public hearing, um, Mr. Zagranik and I went to a UMass basketball game and it was pouring that night. After we got out of the game, we went to the Hadley site to see what the, what the site looked like. And there's three curb cuts. And it was, it was raining, it was pouring. I mean, how much, I don't know. We got a, probably got an inch of rain that night. The ground was pretty frozen, so the water was not getting saturated, was not soaking in. It was basically, whoever goes on the property. Hit it, Tom, hit it. <laughs> <laughs> and there were three channels basically running through each of the curb cuts into Route 9. In one of the curb cuts, there's a catch basin. The other two have no catch basin, and water was puddling along Route 9. When the cars drove by, it was splashing onto, I mean, the water, it wasn't was like the water was this deep, but it was when the cars drove through, the water was splashing onto the, onto the, uh, onto the side of the road and onto the property. And I tried taking a movie, I tried taking a picture with my thing, but with my, my, my phone, but it was so dark I couldn't get anything that would show anything. So, enough said about that. I did email Jeff Squire a couple days later, and I only sent it to Jeff and I explained just what I said. That this is not good. I didn't tell him we were going to do anything, I didn't say he had to do anything, I just gave him a piece of information. I also said that the parking lot, about halfway west of the building was pretty dark and you really couldn't see anything so that needs to be addressed as well and that's it so we can't allow you we can't give you give them permission to drain onto route 9 but we do have the authority if the state wants us to do something about the drainage on the property so with that said, if your applicant could get a letter from the state, if they want, if they're going to, if they would want to continue draining onto Route Nine, we need a letter from the state that says that they can allow, they'll allow unrestricted drainage from this property onto Route Nine. If they can't get that letter, they need to contain the drainage on site and not allow it to drain onto Route Nine. And the lighting, they got to do something about lighting, but I think that, you know, that we, we, we mentioned that at the last planning board meeting, that there's something about the lighting probably isn't, isn't enough. Okay. okay. Any, anybody else on the board have anything uh, to say? Not a related note. Uh, I received a call from, or a voicemail from uh, a, someone from oh. Mass DOT this afternoon saying that they had become aware that there was work proposed for this site and they were not previously aware of it and they want to know what's going on. Uh, I will send you, I will reply to them, I will give them your name and I'll give you the contact information as well. Um, we have a month here to straighten this out. Uh, it has been previously, uh, in previous discussions, uh, Berkshire Design was proceeding on the basis that when Route 9 was reconstructed, three curb, two or three curb cuts were reconstructed. Okay. Uh, so I guess the assumption was that that was an approval of those as curb cuts. Uh, but uh, it is something that Mass DOT is asking for okay. input. Um, 
Well, I'll just mention that I've driven by several times uh, on various days of the week, and um, I have observed both cars being parked on the, the new site, and I haven't seen cars parked on the Comet. Now, that just may be a function of what I went by, but um, I know a comment made previously was that the proprietor has made no effort to use this space he, he had. Um, and whether he is using it or not, whether he's making more effort or not, it does not seem to be as big a problem as it has been. On the other hand, his outdoor dining area is not, not open. So. Okay. Perhaps he's having employees park over at the garage. I'm not sure that was the case. Anybody, other comments, all the comments on the board? Well, certainly, the, you know, there's that designated green space that we're required as only bylaws, and the proposed green space is all the way back south against the back part. The intent of the, uh, the zoning bylaw change was not to have a sea of blacktop running right from the Route 9, but to have some kind of green buffer. So perhaps some of that could be to dress it up a little bit. Okay. And, I agree and with well that. With the I agree with Dr. Zagrani. Oh, um, and the other thing maybe is just is worth, uh, worth saying, since our last, just for the so people will understand why it's being continued. Uh, after, since our last meeting, the Conservation Commission reached out to us and said that this is in the 100-year floodplain, which means that uh, they have jurisdiction over it. Uh, the site engineer replied to that and said that they weren't making any significant changes that would affect flood contours. The Conservation Commission replied, basically, show us, which is why they have to uh, make a, a detour to go through the Conservation Commission process, which may result in no site changes at all. Uh, either way, we, we'll find out in a month. And, uh, but if the state has a drainage issue. Well, they're, they're, again, they, they, that's why I want to bring this out to Mr. Yeah. Reedy tonight, so that they don't go to the they don't go March 10th. Say there's nothing going on. Come back to see us on the 17th and mm -hmm. find out it's completely different. I'm trying to head him. I, would, I, would, but I was I was disappointed when they requested a continuation because I, was, I want to get this out. Fine. So at least as long as you're here, yeah. you've got the notes. You can bring it to your client. They will do as they wish, and we will see. Sure. Okay. I Plus, will. and that's and the neighbors haven't even spoken yet. There, there, there's, <laughs> there's comments coming. There, there's this a bunch is good. Of, no, this is useful. Yeah. You know, there's, there's useful. neighbors no. that have. From what I understand, some very valid concerns that also you will be taking no sign. Okay. So you will have your choice to speak. Oh, one last thing, just for clarification. The reason we are continuing this for a month is oh. that uh, Tuesday, March 3rd, is the state primary. And we are not allowed to hold public hearings on special permits on a uh, a state election day, or even town election day. State any any any, any, any kind election of any day. election day, we're not allowed to have a public hearing. We will be having a regular business meeting on that day, but we will not be scheduling any public hearings. And the comments on the board. Open it up to the audience. I do have a question about parking, or maybe more of a statement. Yes. Could you I live at 107 West Street. And I have several tenants there that also live on that property. And due to the cars being parked in front of our mailbox and our newspaper boxes, we do not get our mail. I have people complaining to me they're not getting their checks until two weeks later than they're supposed to because the mailman won't stop because the cars are there. I've put up signage, I've had it thrown at me. And I was hoping that perhaps the town would be interested in maybe putting up a sign. They also park on the sidewalk there, not part of what you were referring to earlier. But this is a, a concern at this household, because there's as many as eight people living there at different times, and they're not getting their mail, they're not getting their bills, and they're not getting their checks. I would, we're going to do everything we can to address that, but as I read this letter, the selectmen have the jurisdiction. I just didn't. 
I, I would I would encourage you to either go to the selectmen's meeting and voice your concern that you just said them here, and or write them a letter saying exactly what you just said, mm -hmm. so that they're aware of your concerns and your problems. I appreciate that because okay. it is weighing heavy on a lot of people. I we fully can understand that. Thank you. Somebody else? Yeah, um, I've got something yeah. to say. Um, you're talking about drainage on the property. That certainly is an issue. I, I agree with that. Tom Weinzick. Tom Weinzick. I'm an address? 286 River Drive, but I'm part owner of the property on West Street. Okay. The, the property behind them, we don't no, know. No, well, I want to clarify this myself. Hmm. We own the property directly behind Esalon. Right. We also own the property directly to the west of Esalon on the same side of the street. Mm -hmm. This is the first issue that I had before you think you're going to do anything as far as parking or anything. Currently, there's a three bay structure on his property that's actually on my property by 18 inches. Town rules say 15 foot setback for any permanent structure. I went to Esalon after it was surveyed last year by a local surveyor when the pins were placed. I went there to run a string line from pin to pin to get a straight line to see what was what. Well, I couldn't do it because that structure is on our property. Not is it not 15 foot off my property, it's actually on my property. And that hay field that's directly behind Esalon, <clears throat> which my dad had horses for, as you guys probably know, for 50 years, and that was all hay lot. Well, he passed away 11 years ago. So in that time, the sumac, and as any farmer would know, it kind of encroached on the hay field. And when, after it was surveyed last year, I said, well, good, now we know where the lines are. I can come in here and clean this debris out, because when Charlie Cash owned it, you couldn't even walk over there. So now the line was established, my brother and I fully anticipated to go and recover, you know, where it was all grown in with the sumac and crap. And, and I went over there and I couldn't do anything because uh, the buildings on my property, number one, I immediately went to Esalon, spoke with the manager, left my cell phone number and all my contact information, got no reply. Went back two weeks later, same person, same information left again, still got no reply. So you're talking about fixing parking lots and lighting. Nothing's going to happen at all until that structure is down 15 feet off my property. Drainage, lighting, all the vehicles from Esalon. And this is, I'm not trying to embellish here. They're parked all over West Street in front of my house on the edges of the drive. You come out, you can't turn when you want to come out of the driveway sharp because the bumpers of the cars are parked a third into the driveway on either side. That's not too bad. But then in the springtime, I don't see anybody from Esalon coming over to my property with loam and seed and rake out all the tracks that they left all spring and all winter long. Nothing. I got no response by going there two times for the building issue. I don't even concerned about the parking issue because that's so minuscule. And as an abutter, I would like to have a copy of the original site plan showing what he's got for drainage and what's supposed to be for drainage. He doesn't show drainage. And no parking. Inadequate parking. Here's a cop. Here's two copy. Well, not two copy. Here's a copy of each of the site plans for S line. We don't have anything on Charlie Cash's garage. Okay. okay. Just to be clear, I don't know if you're fam how familiar with Charlie Cash's garage, but if you look at, it, if you're standing on Route Nine looking at the garage itself, if you look immediately to the west, which would be to the right, you're going to see a three bay structure there. With the, the shack on that. Right. Yes. We know that. Yeah. That we, we, we've seen the property line show. And you saw the pins. The, 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 the drawing show that encroaching on your property. Yeah, it's corner. on by 15 inches. Okay. It's yeah. on the property. No longer not the 15 foot setback. It's on the property. Right. And my intent is to go in with the equipment and clean back up their property line like it's supposed to be. Okay? You can't do that, Jimmy, until that building is removed or something is resolved there. So before you think about drainage or parking repair or lighting or anything else, that's the first issue. That has to be resolved. And also with the parking, they drive in our, like the driveway and park on that little section. This is Cindy Weinsick. This is my sister-in-law. She owns half the property. There's that little section between their back entrance and my driveway. When they drive in their um, parking lot, they'll park the car on that little section there. And instead of backing up when they leave, they come through my driveway. There's holes always at the end of the driveway. They come in our yard, and I have grandchildren. You know, lots of times, you know, they're there, and there's cars driving in and out of my yard. Never mind the six inches of water up. I've called the police several times. They're parked, actually blocking my driveway. You can't even get out. 
the, the, and I've called him many times the restaurant okay. and it's just the, you know. the, the, the these are points that I said mentioned the other lady bring these up to the board of selectmen as well okay because they're the ones that are we, we're trying to we're trying to, we, we will do everything we can to get the parking addressed but we also want to make sure that they are aware of the neighbors concerns on a property and parking and the issues that are being raised and the, also they don't go by the I think there's a, a noise ordinance mm. there are lots now there are landscapers come um, well before that's, 6 30. that's only a small part of it it is a small part right, of it is, but this, this, here's the big part of it yeah go there in july yes when they're roasting coffee you yes. guys don't have a clue because you don't live there jimmy you can't believe it you have to literally close all your windows in your house the stench is unbelievable when you're driving by a route night oh that kind of smells nice because you're there for 10 or 15 seconds and it's gone Try it for 24-7. Yeah. You open your door, that's all you smell. Because I have asthma and I couldn't breathe to live there. Okay. That is important information for us to know because we can address part of that during site plan approval. Kind of filtering system. Yeah, but, but, but up until now, we never knew there was a big issue with it because nobody's ever told us. Mm -hmm. So let us know. Because we can address, we, they're in front of us, and they're showing the roasting facility in the garage, and we can address the odors that come out of there. I have gone to their establishment and asked them. I said, I know you had to put in filters. Perhaps they need to be changed. Because I'm getting to the point I can't breathe. And if I go off my property, I'm fine. But if I'm there on their roasting days. Couldn't breathe. You'd have to go by there and actually experience it for yourself, I mean, guys. You mean, well, like asthmatic, you said, you drive by there, and and, you, like and it's, it's a it's a ten second odor. Right. But if you stay there, if you live there, it's a whole other game. And the people that own the establishment, they don't, they don't even acknowledge it because they're inside, and then they go home and they never get to witness it. Right. I understand. I mean, Rails roast coffee where they are, but there's no. Homes yeah, near them, no, they're, no. they're also in the industrial zone. Right. So it's a different story. Okay, they're in the business zone over here. And if they're roasting coffee for themselves, it's a permitted use. If they're roasting coffee for as a public. commercial resale, that's considered industrial and it's not okay. Or it may not be, it may not be okay. Maybe a better way to say it. As Paul Wayne took uh, Woody Bridge Road in Hadley, and like Cindy's concern, which is very, should be addressed, you know, we can't go to work, anytime we go to work, we can't start before 8 a.m. Amherst or anywhere else, work. Go on somebody's yard and start working. There's noise violations and everything else. And landscapers over at Escalante at 6.30 in the morning. You know, people are and trying Carl, to sleep. Excuse and Carl, me, when never mind the, the one yeah. and three o'clock dumping of the bottles yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, Five. why is that going on between one and three a.m.? Oh, the trash pickups? I don't know what it is. It's, it's on the roasting time. days. It's on the roasting days, and you hear that Kohenda came in two or three times between 1 and 3 a.m. Yeah, but the outside use, maintenance, and everything else, you know, where it's going to affect the neighborhood people. It should be if it's at 8 o'clock. Does Hadley have a standing bylaw? I don't, seven, I don't I know. I was asking if all the landscapers at the post office said we can't start until 7. Yeah, they'd well, be out there six, six, seven, five, everything up. My sister's a lot of can't start till seven. He knows better. Carl should know better. Of course. Well, in the just of it, guys, that's that's our concern. You know, and like I said, the parking is okay. definitely an issue. There's going to be an issue with drainage because it discharges so much water. Those are valid concerns. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, real and, valid concerns. And like I said, I'm planning on because our business right now, obviously, uh, we're in the excavating business and we're relatively slow now. So during the slow time, we do repairs and maintenance. That's considered maintenance on my list. And now that I've got property lines established, when I've got time like this, I'm going to move a dozer down there, and I'm clearing that sumac and stuff out on my property line. And they, you know, that's perfectly legal. That's your property. Right, exactly. So be aware of that building, you know, be you guys might want to address that. We have nothing, we have no jurisdiction, right. but before you go have, get too active, yeah. uh, you might want to just check with the Conservation Commission, because it is a, the 100-year flood. Mm -hmm. So we Excuse can't me. speak for them. Like I said, there's no trees, guys. It's all it is. Okay. Just some uh, sumac. Okay, yeah, just just check it. We, we don't right. want to say you can or can't. That's just but, that's a it, that's a property could issue. It, be a between again? it still is. There's three. There's oh, almost four acres of hay there. It's now. agricultural then. That's right. It's agricultural. Well, the use of again, it, just check. Don't we, yeah. we? You know, that's out of our that's not our jurisdiction. 
Yes. Mr. Reedy is obviously taking notes and he's going to bring it back. Usually when there's a voluntary or a jurisdictional dispute and sometimes there is a concern, would you rather have our providers or something like that? A green screen would be acceptable. Nothing something there or just kind of let your, your knowledge flow into Mr. Reedy's pen. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, uh, Joe, is that back there, there should be some, after it's cleaned like it's supposed to be, there should be a green and a buffer, you know, five feet of grass and then a row of arbs and maybe four or five feet of grass beyond it and setting the trees six feet off the property line so as they mature, they don't exceed the property line. Set them in on his property six feet so as they grow, I can continue to have my hay field on the certainly side of his property without discharging any water into my hay field. If I can make an editorial comment, you sitting there with your hair like that with the glasses, I see Joe Weinsick, <laughs> your father, <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> well, he would have been a little bit low. Well, he would have been. I'm trying. I'm trying. He, he's trying. I'm holding back. He'd, he'd be more boisterous. I agree, but but just looking there with his, the way he's sitting there with his mannerisms, I yeah. just I can see I Joe. The same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big compliment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, okay. Anybody else on this? We've got your comments. And as far as the parking on your lawns, I really, really encourage you to write a letter and go to see the Board of Selectmen and make it known because, uh, you know, we're trying to do what we can and we'll do everything we can to make sure they stay on their property. If you write a letter, they uh, ask to be on the agenda. They will put you on a future agenda, but they also have a set aside a 15 minute public comment period at every me meeting. Um, and you can go and raise the issues. They won't have a conversation with you, but if you want to just get get it out, and it, it'll also go out on the uh, Happy Public Access TV. So uh, if you want to just raise everyone's awareness, feel free to go to this, the um, the public comment section of the select board meeting tomorrow night. Excellent. With certainly another comment to Mr. Reedy, it was certainly brought to our attention, and I'm sure your legal mind is at work too, the fact that they told us that we can only address the 97 Russell Street or the Abala Garage site when it presented to us, but we do have the concern about echelon parking too. In the spirit of cooperation, it can be worked out, so it's not a deal breaker, but there has to be a spirit of cooperation. So there are issues that have been going in the background that but given, exactly work. But given in the, the issues that, of compromise, given the issues that were just brought up about drainage, I would it would seem that parking is the least of the problem at this point. Well, mm -hmm. we'll we can't really discuss we'll it, we'll so see. we'll, yeah. we'll yeah. talk about it two yeah. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, one last comment. Uh, the select board, having posted signs out there, have encouraged the police or directed the police to be, to start ticketing. So um, it has been said several times that we have a limited police coverage. They, they're on patrol, but if you have a problem, especially with your uh, driveway being blocked, uh, Feel free to call and ask for uh, ask for put in a service call. Ask ask to have them come over. That there there is public safety hazard uh, with blocked driveways, and they will come and ticket and or tow. Well, there there are not no parking signs on the west side of the street. They're only on the common side. Correct. Well, it says no parking from here to corner. It doesn't say no parking in front of their driveways or. But if they're blocking else. if they're blocking a driveway, yeah, that. Yeah. Should be okay. no parking on the side of where the houses are. This is common it's sense. You don't right block mailboxes and driveways. It's common sense. It should be. Yes. Um, you no, know, when I called and asked the police department, they weren't sure. So uh, that's a, a fine point to raise because remember, the police department works for the select board. Right. Select board sets policy, and if the policy will be to ticket vehicles blocking mailboxes, 
the police don't, the patrol officer doesn't set the policy. The oh, select, board, that. the select board sets the policy, so they have to know. Yeah. The last time this was taken up, the reason it was taken up, we've been talking about it for years, but the reason it was taken up was they uh, got a letter from the school saying that uh, school the bus. Bus, bus driver was having trouble mm -hmm. navigating through there. Can see that. Also, also on this letter we just got from the select board, nowhere does it give Esalon permission to park on a common. It just says they have jurisdiction, but nothing about the letter says they can park on a common. Um, oh yeah, the continuation. Motion to continue to um, 317 for so, the... So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Thank you very much. Good. So come back on the 17th. Come back on March 17th. <laughs> Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you for your input. You might want to have to put some hard pack on that driveway at the farm homestead. I'm just going to ask you about that. You know, because the last time I I, I plowed the last time I only plowed the last time I the oh, other driver. Yes. I, I just back you have your back with paper. Let's get I the big deal. Right okay. Well, let's, let's bring them over. Oh, that's six ten and stuff. Seven cars. Every time I plow it, I go once to plow it. Come back at ten o'clock. Plow it again. They come back at three o'clock, and there's three more. I, I, well, how they all fit in there is beyond me. Seven of each copy. <laughs> I'm serious. Really? I'm really serious. Yeah. Yes. It's spelled right out on the zoning bylaw. That's why I, I, I said you need to look at the what, what is required. Your builder should have been looking at this stuff. We uh, the bylaw requires that we take the application and distribute it to multiple that's, other boards. That's what it told me. Envelopes with addresses of the butter. So there's two cop two and two two sets of envelopes. Yeah. No. We need two sets. Because we mail out one set to notify the abutters, and then after a decision is reached, we mail out a second set to the abutter that a decision has been reached with a decision. Okay, so we'll need. We don't. We don't need the house plans. Yeah. Oh, we do. We, we actually do, we do need the house plan because right. it shows. Well, we wrote on this. Accessory apartment. Accessory apartment. Existing family room. So where where is the accessory apartment? This. Name and address on this one. This. 29 by 25. Chairman, what's the name and address? Three high middle. 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 Three high this yeah, this is one we would need. And you need seven of them? We things? would need seven of each of their drawings. May I borrow a pen? Yep, sure. Okay. And is this, this part of the house now, the accessory apartment, or is this going to be added on? That's what's going to be added on, the accessory apartment. Yeah, right here. Seven. These seven sets. We'll talk about that later. Yes, it is. You can add on it. Yeah. That's what uh, Weinzig did on East Street. They okay. built the accessory so apartment on the other side of the garage. So you need seven of these? Yeah. Seven, seven of those 11 by 17. So we need seven. We need seven of these. Yeah. Seven of those. It's okay to reduce it to. Yeah. Oh, actually, you, you can, if you can reduce this to a. <laughs> 11, eight and a half by 11, that's right. It doesn't have to be 11 by 17. I don't know how to do that. Oh, people <laughs> on the printer, they can do it for you. Okay. Seven okay. of those. Seven of those, seven of those. Seven of those. Um, we don't need seven of those. You don't? No. Okay. And that's the same as the big one. Yeah, okay. 
uh, on this one, okay, show the addition. Um, you need to show where your parking is going to be. You can just draw in with a pencil where the parking, you need to have, also like I think it's three parking or four parking spaces. Just show where the parking is going to be on here. Well, I have a double garage, a double driveway and turnabout. Okay, sh you show, show where the driveway and stuff is and show where the park, where the cars are going to be parked. You can just draw that on this drawing. You have to go to the Board of Health as well. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Okay. And you need something from the Board of Health that says your septic system can handle this. I don't have septic. You're on sewer? Yeah. Oh, that's right. The sewer does come down. The really? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you'll need, well, you, uh, well when, when time comes, your building permit, there'll be a sewer tie in something or other so that's okay but there's a sewer then okay that's so there's also a requirement for a notarized statement that <clears throat> one of the units will be owner occupied it's all in the bylaw yes did he put that on the bottom section 26 bylaws yes yeah. go, go, go to go to section 26 and it tells you what you need to do and one of the items under section 26 is that you need a notarized statement saying that with the owner will live in one of the two units. And there's some other words in there about if you sell it or then sell it or whatever else is going to happen. It's all. The bylaw is fairly involved. Okay. So I can't leave you with anything. Do you need this seven? No. That's my existing house. Yeah, that's fine. No, you could just show it on on your plot plan. You show the existing house and the addition. That's okay. all that we need. Okay. okay, you don't need we don't need a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay. And when do I bring this back? You can bring back at our next planning board meeting, which would be the third of March. Okay, so yeah. seven of these, seven of these, double Sheesh. on those letters, correct? Yeah, one more set of mailing like yep. one more set of envelopes, mailing envelopes. Because you have some mail again, I heard you say that. Yeah. And then board of health. Oh no, no, you don't board it up because you're on sewer. Okay. You're all so set. Skip the board of Skip the board of Set of envelopes and the notarized statement. It's, again, so section twenty six. Read go to go on to the yeah, don't don't rely on what we're spewing mm -hmm. off. Yeah. Well, where do I find this section twenty six? If you go to Hadley M A website, HadleyMA.org and go to the planning board, the zoning bylaws are there and you want to go to section twenty six. And if you can't find or have any questions, give me a call. I'll email you section 26. Okay. It will look like that. So you're not taking it. Yeah. Can I ask you one last question? Sure. Um, there's not going to be any more cars. It's a, a we have a garage for two cars, and there's a turnaround, but we're not adding any I more cars. I can't drive anymore. The bylaw still requires you to show, just to show, to show, okay, okay. okay. just, just, so you just want show, to show the, the driveway with yeah. the turnaround. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. just show where it could park, okay, and just show where it could be put. If you don't want to put it in right now, you don't have to, but just show where you could put one okay. or two extra parking spaces, okay. 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 I mean, you it looks like your, your property is more than big enough, yeah. yes, okay. So yeah. you can just call this future if needed okay. or something like that. Okay, but so you, we're I not requiring you to put it in, just show where it could be put in. Okay, okay. I have is that if it was like a neighbors, rental property right? or something like that? I don't know, I don't know what you have for, for I, me. I went by this list. These are all your abutters? Oh, One, two, the show, it says those are your four Any abutter within, four, within 300 feet of your property needs to be notified. So that looks like this is a 300 foot printout. Right. So that means we're not just talking about people who touch you, but people who touch them within 300 feet. Yes. In other words, around, where, where's your map, your, your plot map? The radius of 300 feet around the right. yeah. So if someone so this has is your property. Foot, then another Anybody who touches you within 300 feet around this property. But don't say touches you. Uh, a 
butters oh, any, and any, a butters to a butters within any property owner any, any property within, owner within 300 feet around this property needs to be notified which means everyone which on means this everybody list. on this list so it's not just those four so it's, it's actually going to double be copies of all those people uh, yeah. correct one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen you'll still you have 15 15 15 of butters so or you're 16. gonna get 30 envelopes yes yes, yes. Yes. With stamps. Yep. No, we don't need stamps. Huh. That'll be part of the filing. The filing fee, we'll put the stamps on it. There will be a filing fee of $325. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Can't just build a cabin in the woods. <laughs> the sack is high metal, not yeah. hog's metal. Right? Back. High metal, yes. Let me. So, Mark, from the source point of view, it was originally intended to protect the, uh, the Mount Water. Well, yeah. here's an applicant. Fill all that application. All those areas there. So when you come back, my you'll, give, you'll have the information you that also gives you a little bit of extra on it. Down now, across Rocky Hill If I come road, May 3rd or 4th? March, March, March 3rd. 3rd. March 3rd. March 3rd. How long after that will I be able to do anything? What you, the, if you come here on March 3rd, yeah. we will schedule a public hearing on, Mar on April 7th the election is on the 14th yeah we'll schedule public hearing on the 7th and 20 days or 21 days after the public after the decision is rendered to the town clerk downstairs which typically takes what about a couple, a week of, week, couple, so. couple, couple of, of weeks couple of weeks then you can go to the building inspector and get your building permit and go full steam ahead on building so you probably are looking at uh, mid May to get a building permit okay Thank you for letting me come back. Oh, you no problem. I didn't have it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your help. Okay. Then the ground should be dried Maybe. out by then so yeah. you can get the excavator in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, zoning bylaws. The, uh, Let's take up the Hadley Trust Fund first. That seems to be the easiest one. I incorporate any comments we had. I put everything in with the uh, with the values that we had for for dollars. It's just, I most of the place was five or ten thousand. The only thing I'm going to see um, Jessica on is what is the new chapter. This will be in the Hadley General Bylaws. Okay. Then I can give this to uh, this will be ready to go into. Um, the warrant. There's no, other, there's no other comments on the Hadley Trust Fund, right? No. Okay. Uh, fund. On the definitions, the first well, section. When the trust is created, which will be at town meeting, correct? Yes. Will these? I'm not sure if you filled in. I, I'm. I'm not quite. I, that was a question I had myself. Um, on this one. Do we need to leave the spaces in there? For the original trustees, three members shall serve for, for a term of two years and two shall serve for a term, for a term of one year. I, I, I don't think you want to leave blanks because that means every time you put somebody new, it's going to have to be amended. Yeah, no, just take the blanks take out. Take the blanks out. Okay. Yeah. That will just be a statement that that's how it's going to be set up. All right, that's fine. I have a small grammatical. This was the other one. This sure. was. Oh, wait a minute. We're not, that, we're, we aren't at that one yet. We will okay. get to it. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm going to take a guess here and call it. Uh, well, yeah, you have to talk to Jessica uh, because the numbering is inconsistent. Yeah, I noticed that myself. I was, that's what I was looking at, but I said, yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's pro probably like 265 or something like that. Okay. Under section two. Definition. About halfway down, there's a line. The trust. Yeah. Down the trust, it says of every sort and description. What does that mean? That means you can you can donate a peck of apples and. Uh, well, it the trust should be authorized to acquire. Uh, like Real, it. personal, both tangible and intangible. Um, if the trust thought it was worth acquiring a peck of apples, they could. 
but uh, it doesn't obligate it's them to accept it. Yeah. Just they don't have to accept authorizes it. Right. them to acquire it. Okay. Without having to go back to town meeting for every. Gotcha. Okay. Anything else on the trust fund? Okay, we do different definitions. Um, pretty much, I changed the definition with the comments that we had at the uh, last meeting. You're on to. to And when I printed out all the when I printed out my copy, all the comments came out. I said, "How do I get rid of these stupid comments?" It took me a while to figure out how to, how to do it because of the way he put it together. But I finally got it. So you have the copies you got did not have any comments on; they were all cleared out. But the first section was all where the where the definitions will be removed. Because when I went through it, I found out not every section will have every definition removed. Um, for whatever reason, won't move there. Um, and it was just a matter of systematically going through every section. And I found back on section 30, is it section 30? No, section 29. No, wait, well, where am I? Uh, Oh, there was one section in here. Was it 30? No. Okay, that was under under this one. I found it. I found another mistake, and, and, and but that that's correct. I corrected that one under the uh, vote to accept include the trust fund. Okay. okay, that's a different comment. Yeah, that's the one I was going to add that in that very yep. first line. Yeah, yep. wait, 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 wait. Let's get yeah. the definition first. Okay. Any anything else on definition? Everything look okay? Uh, section one point two on the first page, next to last line of the first paragraph. Should be and the word shall instead of the words shall. Just grammatical. Wait, wait, wait. Right here. Just take the S off. And, oh, words. okay. Of the word. Okay. Otherwise, I think they did a nice job. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Okay. The. Uh, Trust fund. When it was 2016, when we took the trust fund was never um, created, and in 2016 we took the ability to even utilize a trust fund out of the zoning bylaw. Now that we're putting the trust fund availability there. We need to put the put the ability to use the trust fund back in the zoning bylaw. That's where, to amend section of the bylaw 26 and 27 by adding adding the following. Basically, we're putting back in what we took out in 2016. And just as a comment, when I was doing that, 27.4 at the bottom of the page, um, and I knew that we knew this was going to happen when we created our table of uses. We used to have a sections. Two and three used to all be words on what all the different zones meant. And then, what about four years ago, five years ago or so, we created a table like a big spreadsheet. <coughs> different zones, different areas, what they all meant. And we went through and tried to find where it referenced sections two and three through the zoning bylaw and make it now reference the table of the, the table. And I found 27.4 referenced section 3.7. Well, there is no section 3.7. There's now section 3, note 7. And it's talking about uh, senior housing. Mm -hmm. 
within there. So that's just a minor, that's just a housekeeping note on number 27 floor. Okay. I know, Mike, and you have some quite some comments on this. So I'll let I just, I just wanted to add, it, it, it says to vote amend. Oh, should be to, to vote, vote to, to amend. amend. That was funny. Yep. Uh, 25.4.4, just submit appraisal. Shouldn't it be certified appraisers? By certified appraisers, I mean, you can go out and get anybody to appraise anything, but you want to have a certified appraiser, I believe. And you might want to get more than one because don't you usually get three and you take the average? Uh, well, it depends. It's an APR has to certify an appraiser, but the yeah. APR only has people that are on a list that are certified. Yeah, but banks, if somebody's uh, going to give us. Well, banks only have a list that are certified now, too. So, so. Uh, you know, appraisals, but I, th I think appraisals by definition, no, not anyone can do an appraisal. We have, can we say appraisals acceptable in form to the planning board? Yeah, acceptable appraisals. Yeah. So we should it? say acceptable in form because acceptable appraisals might mean that we're putting a dollar amount on it. We just want acceptable in form. Should we add, a, to be add appraisals the into the so definitions? Okay. Yeah, right. Appraisals. <laughs> that would cover the satisfactory yeah. to the planning board. Yeah. You can spell it out there, or you can put it in the definitions, and then so, it covers you yeah. throughout the ordinance. Just yeah. as with so many other things, there's an entire state board of registration of appraisals. Yeah. So, appraisals, appraiser, appraisal has its own definition in the statutes. So, uh, but, but does this definition then assume that it's the state definition because we've got it here? I think we say appraisal. We okay. mean we mean the full. Okay. Okay. The full Monty. So do we need one? Do we put that statement in? I think we can we can leave it in. Leave it. Okay. As well as other okay. data relevant to the ter determination. What is other relevant data? I just don't know. Or other data relevant to the determination. As, as well as other data relevant. Well, in re you want to add in the opinion of the planning board relevant <laughs> in the opinion yeah, of the planning board. Yeah. Because I don't know what that means. Well, it doesn't make <laughs> it doesn't, it, mean doesn't much. it doesn't change it. As, it, as long as it's uh, functionally attractive, it's okay. <laughs> Touche. Then uh, we get down to twenty-five seventeen. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They have a stamp bill, the appraisers. I think they yeah. have, but they have a registration number. Uh, okay. okay. Next one, Mike. What is so, it? So this twenty-five seven three provide affordable housing for low or moderate income households. It varies across the state, isn't it? That that is defined, it's defined in in our definition. Okay, good. Okay, good. And then we say, what is the purpose of the trust? We could, including but not limited to, to the provision of favorable financing terms. Are we going to get in the lending business? Maybe. The affordable trust fund committee can get involved in that. Okay. And we talk so about they don't have to, but they can. We, we talk about, then later on, we talk about affordable units. I think we've talked about the fact that one of the reasons you need affordable housing is people can't afford to buy a house because the financing, financing concerns, credit concerns, or whatever. So when we say affordable units, we're really talking about affordable, primarily rental units. Do you want to put that in there? It doesn't matter. No, because you can, you can also put affordable housing units in full-blown housing you can you can you can delimit a housing unit that they own All right now if they if they can come up with the financing to own it well, that's what the whole thing is that the, the financing for the affordable housing unit has to be within their means based on the affordable limits but, but Primary affordable housing units in Hadley are rental units. That is correct. I, and as far as I can tell, that's probably what's going to continue to happen. And, and you're probably right. But to say that they have to be rental. No, they don't. Okay, that's why, that's why the thing is in there about being able to buy or build. Now, a question I've got on this whole affordable thing is. But, but, it, go ahead. But, but when you say 
providing favorable financing terms, what is the mechanism for providing that financing? We could work that out later on. Later on, this okay. this is an off okay. enabling act, okay. enabling okay. statute. Okay, I'm just yeah. th thinking ahead, I guess. Yeah, but you're right. There, this is there's some complexity to this stuff. One of the questions I have, and it's something we have to think about, is what's the donation that they put forward? If somebody like a TDR is straight, it, it's, it's spelled out. What is the formula to determine what the donation should be to this fund if somebody puts in a housing unit? Yeah. In other words, somebody puts in a 10 lot subdivision. Who knows? Let's pick a, pick a number uh, 13 lot subdivision. They need to have two affordable units in that subdivision by a zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. What is their donation if they, decide, if they decide to put the money into the trust fund? It's not spelled out anywhere. We need to think about that and get that. There's going to be a lot of questions at the town meeting about the mechanisms here. Yeah. And you want it to be relatively simple. You don't want to have to go in and recalculate for every development. You want it to. Well, yeah, you, want, you want to have some kind of a formula. Yeah. yeah. And um, we have time to do research on that and yeah. find out what other towns might be doing. You know, like I said, we got. I think you. We're almost being pushed into this when I personally don't think there's a wolf at our door for more affordable housing unit. We have the highest percentage oh, okay. in Happy Valley. Oh, no, 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 nobody's looking to go forward and spend this money. One has to right, right now, but we've got to have this pile of money there. It's going to be such a great temptation. Well, is it any better to have it sitting in the Bacon Wilson Trust account? We're not getting anything. Well, I, 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 not I totally opinion. agree, and I'm almost saying when we went ahead with it the first time, well, we didn't know we had 13 percent. Yeah. However, doesn't matter. We we we're we're so we're, 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 we're ahead of the problem. Yeah, we want to stay ahead of the problem. We've got roughly a half a million dollars we could be have sitting in town budget, town coffers, getting at least a couple percent interest. Yeah, I'm not going to oppose it, but you know th th that's what so. the whole thing about is to get this the, the fund, and I mean, if we have troubles with this part, we could create the fund and leave this out for the time being. Could, yeah. I, 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 if, I, if there's if there's questions on this particular stuff on the zoning bylaw, and there might be, then we pass over. I would prefer. To, I don't think this thing is. Yeah, I, I don't want to let the perfect be the enemy of the yeah. of getting something done. Yeah. But are uh, you saying that we don't need this? No, I'm not saying we don't need this. We do need this. We don't. We may not need We've it. We've got money out there. So we everywhere. may not so, need so it. So let's, let's put it in there. If yeah. we have to mend it, we can so mend it later. Right now, if we had a situation <clears throat> like we did with Barry Roberts, <clears throat> he had to get a variance from the ZBA to allow him to make a payment in lieu of creating buildings so if we have this in there we have the mechanism in Great. place okay. do, do you uh, recall how we came up with the amount barry roberts had to put we in? went back and forth with barry yeah. and his mm -hmm. lawyer yeah. and i think that the basically what barry was offering if i'm remembering correctly was the the um the difference between the profit he would have made if he had sold, if he had done, how many units are there? 34, 30, 30, 34, 34, something, 34. Okay, if he had, he, he gave us the difference between the profit he would have made if he had sold all 34 at market rate versus selling 30 at market rate and four mm -hmm. at lower rate. Uh, is that a good formula? I don't know. Uh, it made sense at the time. And um, I'm not sure that's a good formula. I think, I think we, we, might get, you know, we may have gotten a little short change. Well, so. we, we <laughs> may have, but the other, but the other yeah, choice, the learning process. Yeah, the other choice was worse. We yeah. couldn't have get the fund to manage the four houses. No, that, exactly. Yeah. That was the nightmare. No, I'm, not, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. not saying that we should have been in the business of managing. I'm saying maybe we, should, we could have gotten a little more. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we had, we had, anyways. 
but uh, you know, there's there's a significant piece of money there. Sure. Plus, what's in the, of course, at least the CPA fund is getting interest. Yeah. But this one is there's there's a bunch of money there, and I'd like to bring it into our town budget, town not budget. That's not the right word. Town coffers to at least let the town get the interest on it. Okay. So, so did you have any other comment on it, Mike? No. Okay. No, so I will make these changes and get them to uh, the, uh, I guess, David Nixon for, to put into the uh, warrant. Yeah. And um, what's his name? Chris Okafor says he does not have an as built plan for Macon's Way. Yes. Oh, um, I saw him last week. He it's more complicated than that. Okay. He has the same plan that Randy gave us. He says it's not good enough. Oh, okay. What's a lucky? Uh, he wants a PE stamp on it. Randy's surveyor stamp is on it, but he wants a PE on it. Um, he is, uh, what he is saying is that it, and I'm not sure whether this is a reflection um, of just he came from a community that may have done things differently, or he may have his his prior community may have done things right, and we didn't realize we weren't doing it right. Uh, I don't think we had a uh, when Marlo Warner was the DPW director. I don't think we had a single subdivision. Hillside was not during him, was it? Uh, no, I think Hillside was earlier, much earlier. Right. So uh, he's looking for the stamp. Does he looking for the stamp? Uh, he he seems to have a list of requirements, and he was going to go. Randy Eiser was going to go down there and go over it. With okay. Him. Okay. Um, so what I what I don't know, and I'm uh, he did ask me today if we could sit down, and I I will sit down with him next week sometime. Um, to go over uh, to go over this, uh, so I'm just not sure. He, he also said that um, in order to satisfy Mass DOT, that a town road could be added to the Chapter 90 eligibility, he has to have a plan to meet certain standards. So I'm getting the impression <clears throat> that there are some standards out there that we may not have been aware of. Uh, because it wasn't called to our attention. Okay. Uh, we've been asking for an as-built plan, and we've been getting feedback from Highway Department and now DPW that yeah, yeah, that's okay, we're good. Um, and now we're getting feedback saying that what apparently was satisfactory in the past is not that's very not, possible. Not good enough. That okay. could very well be. So again, I don't know whether it's could a matter of get the information to us. We'll bring it up today. Yeah. yeah. If it's well, we, so if when we see that's a note that we can make to uh, Ken when he comes to see us next at the next meeting. What is the DOT requirements to accept for a town road to be accepted? Is there? Does he know? Actually, give me your give me your contact that you're going to talk to tomorrow with the DOT. I'll give him a call. Okay. I mean that would be about even be better. Go to the horse's mouth. Uh, he may not know because he's right away. But, but he may be he able may to know who to call. Who to call? Yes, that's 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 good enough to me. Who do I contact? I mean, I drive by there probably twice a week on my delivery route. I could even stop and talk to him for that matter. Although they probably wouldn't listen to me, need an appointment. So, uh, yeah, we can straighten that out. And if, if we need something better, we'll get something better. We, you know, we still have a few streets out there that uh, have some lingering issues, Bayberry being one. And um, uh, what is. How about Birch Meadow? Did we ever resolve that? I mean, the Asheville plan was not necessary. No, no, that not has right. never been resolved, and the uh, that has been through many hands. The prior owner 
went bankrupt. That's that not a town road, right? That's not a. Uh, that's the one off Rocky Hill. So right. Bay yeah. Bayberry off of Shattuck Road. Yes. Yeah. So it's one of the Burkham properties. No, no, no. That was that was Newton Waste. They uh -huh. built the road. They both moved out. Don't uh -huh. have any idea where they are, and they technically own the road. Well, they they, they sold. They wholesaled. They, they were selling off individual lots, and they wholesaled off the last five or six lots, including the road, oh, okay. to someone else who finished selling the lots, and then the LLC was dissolved. And uh, so uh, that's something we're trying to get at with that requirement going forward, that at the time of application, you give us the deed for the road, yes. not, uh, not after you're done. Um, so, so, yeah, our, our new subdivision regs take care of that, but we have several lingering out there that we have no, it, there's, there's some issues with them too. Anything else? I have nothing else. Nope. Motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. No. What's I, that? I have something else. Yes. The zoning amendment, is that's not going to the warrant or? Yes, the, there are three zoning amendments. Of uh, the uh, parking. The uh, parking. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we should have asked Tom when he was here. He was going to get some more information on that. Um, oh, good catch. It's on, it, it, there is a space on the warrant oh, for it. Okay. So I will try to find out what's going on with that one. Because he was going to go back and look at it some more and get us some more information. Okay. He probably forgot about it tonight. Because, uh, Ken Comia gave us some information on it, but I think his is just way too much. I just thought some of his numbers were quite a change. You know, not not to say that our two to one, you know, doesn't you know, it just seemed like he went, you know, the one one space for ten thousand. I calculated that as like a one to forty instead of two to one. So yeah, that's, that, that's, 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 that's eighty that's, times. When he was here, I said yeah. one to ten thousand is a little bit yeah. uh, the, the, too much in the other direction. Yeah, because you know there's going to be some other business at it. Yeah, and they're going to come to us praying for relief, or the CBA praying for relief. Yeah, we got to be. We, we, we've got to we've got to design it not just for like a storage facility. We've got to design it a bit more for like an industrial location. Yeah. Uh, if you have an industrial location, you're going to have trucks parking there. All right. You know, I you, think you're going to have a depot for Amazon. Well, we can't design for that. <laughs> no, no, I know, but but, uh, but but that's again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also went to the PDPC meeting that Bill was unable to attend. Um, I can report report back. I'm not going to bore you with all my notes. Uh, there, there was a talk by Linda Dunleavy. She made a presentation. She's the executive director of Franklin the Carp. Franklin yeah. Regional Council of Go Governments, and she's been working on this RPAC, Rural Policy Advisory Commission, um, politicking to Boston, and uh, talked about rural is defined by uh, having less than 500 people per square mile, um, and there was some discussion about, you know, that's it's an imperfect world, but that's the number which we go by. Uh, talked about the aging and declining demographics, uh, the infrastructure needs, um, older housing stock, high-speed internet, and physicians being issues for the rural communities. Um, she talked about well, there was a there was talk about east-west rail because uh, Boston. Whereas we're sh our demographics are shrinking, they're predicted to grow, and I don't remember what the time period was, if it was five or 10 years. They're, they're expected to grow 31%. And so there was discussion about how we have what they need. You know, we have people that could, if they could commute on a east-west rail, could provide them with some of the employee needs that, that they have and we could stay uh, anyway there was discussion about I, that i saw the estimate for getting from pittsfield to boston on this so-called rail mm. three and a half hours that's unacceptable they were saying it's that they were saying if you talked about tying it to albany there might be a lot more traction if you went you know 
but um, once you build the rail, the number of trains you put on it is almost immaterial. Um, well, that's true. Except yeah. that the Housatonic tunnel gets plugged up. It, 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 last it, week you can't get any trains. It, 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 as long as you have two rails. As long as you have two rails, two rails, yeah. one in each direction. And I thought this was of interest. Um, the PVPCs, I think, in 18 months, their lease is up in Springfield. So there, there was there was talk about communities should say, hey, you know, we'll give you a nice lease in, in our community. So that's that's an opportunity. The North Valley Hall. They had that's they coming up. PVPC tax free. Yeah. No, that's right. Okay, that's a different company. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the okay. Franklin Cog is the planning board for Franklin County. That's why it primarily exists because they get dues from all the communities up there. That's why the Hampshire Council of Governments. The Hampshire one. Yeah. Yeah, right. real purpose. Yeah, the Franklin Cog is the equivalent of the Pioneer Valley Planning yeah. Commission. So they got to come up with ideas. Yeah. yeah. But they're, they're, they've uh, not school. gone under. Russell School. Sure. So they were at uh, they were on the Big E grounds for quite a few years. Then they moved to the unused, I think it was the third floor of the Westfield Town Hall or City Hall. And then they moved to uh, their current location about uh, probably 10, 15 years ago. How many employees do they have? Where is it? It is Congress, Congress, Congress Street. Street. Congress, Congress Street. Congress. Congress, Congress, Street. Congress Street in Springfield. I thought it was a, an April Fool's joke because in the Republican it's on like right April 1, they announced that PVPC was moving into the empty Hooters building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was sure it was a joke, but no, Tim Brennan was very proud of the, the deal they had negotiated. Okay. Um, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting history. Thank you. And thank you, John. <laughs>